Welcome back to Jesse Lau's channel, your ultimate source for financial trading wisdom. Today, we're journeying further into the invaluable teachings of Sun Tzu's The Art of War, specifically Chapter 4, Tactical Dispositions. As we always strive to do, we'll draw meaningful correlations between Sun Tzu's timeless warfare strategies and modern financial trading techniques. We find numerous insights that bear significant relevance to financial trading. To distill this ancient wisdom, we have identified 13 key principles that can guide us on our journey through the financial markets. Let's unpack them together. Point 1. Understanding Market Positioning Sun Tzu wisely advises, the good fighters of old first put themselves beyond the possibility of defeat, and then waited for an opportunity of defeating the enemy. Akin to this is the principle of understanding market dynamics in trading. The primary goal should be to ensure our strategy positions us securely, minimizing exposure to unnecessary risk, and only then do we await the opportunity to profit. Point 2. Risk Management The fundamental aspect of Sun Tzu's teachings comes into play here. He emphasizes, to secure ourselves against defeat lies in our own hands, but the opportunity of defeating the enemy is provided by the enemy himself. This insight underscores the critical role of risk management in trading. Although the market's movements are beyond our control, we can secure ourselves against defeat through measures like setting stop losses and avoiding over-leveraging. Point 3. The Power of Patience Sun Tzu said, thus the good fighter is able to secure himself against defeat, but cannot make certain of defeating the enemy. This can be interpreted in a trading context as the necessity for patience. Making profitable trades isn't guaranteed, even when our defenses are solid. We must patiently wait for the right opportunities to ensure victory. Point 4. Optimal Trading Psychology Sun Tzu advises, one may know how to conquer without being able to do it. This highlights the psychological aspect of trading. Knowing how to trade and actually executing those trades are two different things. It's important to manage emotions and maintain a calm and disciplined mind. Point 5. Offensive and Defensive Tactics Sun Tzu says, security against defeat implies defensive tactics. Ability to defeat the enemy means taking the offensive. As traders, we should balance between defensive tactics such as risk management and offensive tactics like seizing profitable opportunities when they arise. Point 6. Strength and Aggression Sun Tzu elaborates, standing on the defensive indicates insufficient strength, attacking, a superabundance of strength. In trading, this could be translated into managing our capital effectively, understanding that aggressive trading might not always be the best approach. Point 7. Flexibility and Strategy The general who is skilled in defense hides in the most secret recesses of the earth. He who is skilled in attack flashes forth from the topmost heights of heaven, said Sun Tzu. This underlines the importance of flexibility in our trading strategy, knowing when to lay low and when to strike. Point 8. Realizing Opportunities Sun Tzu mentions, to see victory only when it is within the ken of the common herd is not the acme of excellence. As traders, we must be able to identify opportunities before they become apparent to everyone else. This is what sets successful traders apart. Point 9. Excellence in Execution Sun Tzu tells us, neither is it the acme of excellence if you fight and conquer and the whole empire says, well done. This could be interpreted as the need for continuous learning and improvement in our trading journey. Even if our trades are successful, there is always room for refinement. Point 10. The Art of Winning Sun Tzu says, what the ancients called a clever fighter is one who not only wins, but excels in winning with ease. This reiterates the fact that profitable trading should not come from struggle but from a well-planned and executed strategy. Point 11. Knowing when to act. One may know how to conquer without being able to do it. In trading, knowledge alone isn't enough. We must also understand the right timing and context to apply our knowledge effectively. Sometimes, the best action is inaction. It's a reminder that knowing when to trade is just as important as knowing how to trade. Point 12. Leadership and Discipline in Trading The consummate leader cultivates the moral law, and strictly adheres to method and discipline, thus it is in his power to control success, Sun Tzu declares. In trading, this implies sticking to our plan, maintaining discipline, and managing our emotions. These are the moral laws we must cultivate to control our trading success. Point 13. The weight of a well-planned strategy. A victorious army opposed to a routed one is as a pound's weight placed in the scale against a single grain, Sun Tzu says. This underlines the significance of a solid trading plan. A well-executed trading strategy, much like a well-coordinated army, carries significantly more weight than hastily made decisions, akin to a disorganized and defeated army. In essence, Sun Tzu's wisdom in the art of war is remarkably relevant to our trading pursuits. By understanding and incorporating these strategies into our trading behavior, we can navigate the unpredictable waves of the financial markets more effectively. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. Now let's read the fourth chapter, Tactical Dispositions. Sun Tzu said, the good fighters of old first put themselves beyond the possibility of defeat, and then waited for an opportunity of defeating the enemy. 
To secure ourselves against defeat lies in our own hands, but the opportunity of defeating the enemy is provided by the enemy himself. Thus the good fighter is able to secure himself against defeat, but cannot make certain of defeating the enemy. Hence the saying, one may know how to conquer without being able to do it. Security against defeat implies defensive tactics. Ability to defeat the enemy means taking the offensive. Standing on the defensive indicates insufficient strength, attacking, a superabundance of strength. The general who is skilled in defense hides in the most secret recesses of the earth. He who is skilled in attack flashes forth from the topmost heights of heaven. Thus on the one hand we have ability to protect ourselves, on the other, a victory that is complete. To see victory only when it is within the ken of the common herd is not the acme of excellence. Neither is it the acme of excellence if you fight and conquer and the whole empire says, well done. To lift an autumn hair is no sign of great strength, to see the sun and moon is no sign of sharp sight, to hear the noise of thunder is no sign of a quick ear. What the ancients called a clever fighter is one who not only wins, but excels in winning with ease. Hence his victories bring him neither reputation for wisdom nor credit for courage. He wins his battles by making no mistakes. Making no mistakes is what establishes the certainty of victory, for it means conquering an enemy that is already defeated. Hence the skillful fighter puts himself into a position which makes defeat impossible, and does not miss the moment for defeating the enemy. Thus it is that in war the victorious strategist only seeks battle after the victory has been won, whereas he who is destined to defeat first fights and afterwards looks for victory. The consummate leader cultivates the moral law, and strictly adheres to method and discipline, thus it is in his power to control success. In respect of military method, we have, firstly, measurement, secondly, estimation of quantity, thirdly, calculation, fourthly, balancing of chances, fifthly, victory. Measurement owes its existence to earth, estimation of quantity to measurement, calculation to estimation of quantity, balancing of chances to calculation, and victory to balancing of chances. The victorious army opposed to a routed one is as a pound's weight placed in the scale against a single grain. The onrush of a conquering force is like the bursting of pent-up waters into a chasm a thousand fathoms deep.